So let us define what is square of an operator. Okay, how to define square of a number? Phi square. It means you are multiplying the same number two times. So similarly, square of an operator is multiplication of the same operator two times. So operator a square is nothing but you are applying the same operator two times. Or you can even define what is a cube of an operator. Operator a cube means you have to apply the operators three times. And since you are now dealing with only one type of operator we need not emphasize on the sequence of application so square of an operator say for example a square of f of x okay it is nothing but the multiplication of the same operator two times it means you have to apply the same operators same operator okay twice on this function f of x similarly you can define cube of an operator operator a cube of f, f of x is nothing but you are multiplying the same operator three times it is nothing but applying in sequence the same operator three times a of a of a of f of x for example So let operator a be d by dx and f of x is equal to sin x. Okay. Then what is a square of f of x? It is nothing but applying the same operator two times d by dx of d by dx sin x. That is d by dx of sin x is cos x. So it becomes d by dx of cos x which is minus sin x. So square of an operator is nothing but applying the same operator twice. Now we will discuss about an important property of operator called as commutative property. Before that I would like to tell you that uh, we have discussed about the additional property, subtraction property and multiplication property. We do not have a, a rule or a property for division of operators. So what is operator A divided by operator B is not defined. There is no specific rule for division of operators. Okay, now we will discuss about Remember, during the multiplication of operators, I pointed out that sequence of the application of operators is very, very important. The rule is, it is from right to left, okay. The rightmost operator is applied first, okay, and then we move towards left, okay. The sequence is very, very important. Why this sequence is very, very important, I had explained you by giving two examples, okay. In one example, we found that a into b and b into a gave same result whereas in one more example we observed that a into b and b into a does not give the same result that is why sequence is very very important because the two operators may or may not commute with each other okay 4 into 5 is 20 5 into 4 is also 20 so in which sequence we are multiplying the two numbers same numbers is immaterial so multiplication of numbers is commutative whereas addition of two number is also commutative because 4 plus 5 or 5 plus 4 the sequence is immaterial both give same result 9 but when it comes to subtraction of numbers it is not commutative 4 minus 5 and 5 minus 4 okay they do not give same result so in operators this uh, commutative property may be true or may not be true depending on the nature of operators. So two operators A and B are said to commute with each other if A into B is equal to B into A. So two operators A and B 
commute with each other they commute with each other if a into b is equal to b into a or the correct way of writing this is a into b of f of x is equal to b into a of f of x so the sequence in which the operators are applied on the function is immaterial so in such cases the two operators are said to commute with each other and if a into b is not equal to b into a then the two operators the two operators do not commute with each other okay here i will only focus on the definition of the commutative property but this commutative property has a very important physical significance okay it has a very important interpretation okay in uh, especially if you take heisenberg's uncertainty principle okay where we said that the momentum and position of the electron cannot be measured simultaneously and accurately that is related to the commutative property of operators remember each of the physical quantity of classical mechanics it may be momentum angular momentum position okay uh, velocity etc all the classical mechanic quantities are represented by certain operators in quantum mechanics that we'll discuss in detail later so each of a classical mechanic quantity is represented by an operator for example velocity okay of a particle is represented by a particular operator in quantum mechanics similarly momentum position mom angular momentum all are represented by a particular operator okay now whether two property can be measured simultaneously and accurately depends on whether the corresponding operators commute with each other or not okay for example if i take momentum and position we know that the position and the momentum of an electron cannot be calculated accurately as well as simultaneously why because the the operators corresponding to momentum and position do not commute with each other so if two operators do not commute with each other then the corresponding classical mechanic quantities cannot be determined simultaneously and accurately the momentum operator and the position operator do not commute with each other so the corresponding quantity represented by these operators that is momentum and position cannot be determined simultaneously as well as accurately okay so we will not go into much detail of this aspect we will only remember that in some cases depending on the nature of operators a and b they may commute with each other or they may not commute with each other i had given two examples in my pre previous video in which the first case the two operators commute with each other a into b is equal to b into a whereas in the second case they do not commute with each other a into b is not equal to b into a similarly you can give other examples now we will discuss about some important types of operators that we will require in quantum mechanics the one such class of operator is called as linear operator so remember an operator may be linear or non-linear but in quantum chemistry or in quantum mechanics we always use this linear operator so what is linearity of an operator or what do you mean by a linear operator let us define You have, I have an operator A, only one operator A, and now I have two functions f of x and g of x. One operator A and two operands f of x and g of x. And this operator A is called a linear operator if it satisfies this particular mathematical 
condition. See here, what I am doing is, I am adding the two functions, f of x plus g of x, to give a new function. And on this function, I am applying operator a. On the other hand, I will apply first the operators, operator on the function. So, a of f of x and b of f of x and then add them. So, here first I have added the two function and then I have applied the operator. Here I am applying the operator first on individual functions and then adding them. And if both give the same result, then this operator A is called a linear operator. Okay, so A is called a linear operator if it satisfies this condition. A of f of x plus g of x is equal to A of f of x plus b of f of x. So don't get confused with this equation with the additional addition rule of commutator. In addition rule of commutator, you had sum of two operators applied on the function. Here you have only one operator applied on sum of two functions. So they are completely different equations. You can also define this linear property of an operator in another way. For example, okay, suppose if A is a linear operator satisfying this condition. What I will do is, here I have taken two different operators. Now I will take same uh, two different operands. Okay, so here I will take the same operand f of x plus f of x plus f of x. I will add them, say for example, n number of times. a of f of x plus f of x plus f of x, n number of times. So according to this equation, because a is a linear operator, this is also equal to a of f of x plus a of f of x plus a of f of x so on a of f of x containing n number of terms. So this property is because a is a linear operator. This now can be written as a of f of x plus f of x plus f of x writing n number of times is nothing but n into f of x. Okay, 5 plus 5 plus 5, 3 times is nothing but 3 into 5. Okay, so this is nothing but n into f of x is equal to a of f of x plus a of f of x plus a of f of x added n number of times is nothing but n into a of f of x. So, the linear operator also satisfies this condition a of some constant n into f of x is equal to constant n into a of f of x. So this definition also holds good for a linear operator but remember here n should be a number okay it should be just a constant. So you can define the linearity of an operator or a linear operator either by using equation a of f of x plus g of x is equal to a of f of x plus a of g of x or by using this condition a of n into f of x is equal to n into a of f of x but remember n is a constant. So let us take some examples and see whether the operator is a linear operator or not. So let us pick a very simple operator g by dx and you have two functions sin x okay sin x. Now let, let me apply the second condition okay for defining the linearity of an operator. What is the second condition? A of 
n into f of x should be equal to n into a of f of x where n is a constant. So let us uh, try to apply this rule. Okay, so d by dx of n into sin x function f of x. And you know, as per the rule of differentiation, if you have a constant, it can be removed from the differentiation. So this becomes n into d by dx of sin x. This is a of n into f of x. This is n into a of f of x. Therefore, d by dx is a linear operator. d by dx is a linear operator. Similarly, d square by dx square, d cube by dx cube, third differentiation. In general, nth derivative. All these are examples for linear operators and most of the operators that we will be using in quantum chemistry will contain these terms d by dx or d square by dx square okay because they are linear operators most of the mathematical equations that we will uh, suppose uh, to be deriving it in our future classes will consist of this type of operators because they are linear operators on the other hand, let me take one more example of uh, a square root a is equal to a square root operator and f of x is 4x square. So what is a of n into f of x and what is n into a of f of x? Okay, let us try to calculate and see whether both give the same result. So first let us apply a into n of f of x. That is a is a square root of a square root operator n into f of x is 4x square which is equal to square root of 4 is 2 square root of x square is x into square root of n. Now let us apply n into a of f of x. This is n into operator a square root of f of x. That is 4x square. That is 4 square root is 2. x square square root is x into n. And here we clearly see that a of n into f of x is not equal to n into a of f of x therefore the square root is not a linear operator d by dx d square by dx square all are examples for linear operators but square root is not an example for linear operators similarly you have other operators such as logarithm exponential they are not example for linear operators all those examples i have given in the material that i will be uh, sharing with you later now another type of operator is called as a delta operator or a del operator represented by the symbol of an equilateral triangle but it is an inverted equilateral triangle del operator del operator okay if i take this simple operator differentiation operator d by dx Remember this operator contains only one variable x, therefore such type of operators are suitable for application on function containing only one independent variable. So I can apply this d by dx on f of x. 
and this type of function f of x containing only one variable okay will be much useful for describing a system where a particle or in particular electron is moving only in one direction in this particular case it is x direction but you all know that in chemistry problems generally we are discussing with the the movement or uh, the uh, movement of the electron around the nucleus in an atom and in all these cases it is not a one dimensional motion it is actually a three dimensional motion and when we are dealing with a three dimensional system that is uh, a uh, system where uh, in order to represent the uh, represent the position of the electron we require three positions x y and z that is the position of the electron along x axis y axis and z axis such type of functions cannot be useful or are not useful for three dimensional problems so we require a mathematical function depending on three variables so for a three dimensional system we have to use a function depending on three variables f of x y z and when we have a function containing three variables we cannot use this operator containing single variable we have to use an operator containing three variables so this del operator is nothing but the extension of this simple operator d by dx to three dimension d by dx is a one dimensional operator where this del operator is nothing but a three dimensional operator it is a simple extension of d by dx to three dimension so let us define this del operator this del operator is nothing but the extension of d by dx to three dimension that is x y and z axis now d by dx represents the operator component along x axis similarly you require one more term d by dy an operator component along y axis and d by dz an operator component along z axis so you this del operator contains three component one component along x another along y and one along z so del operator is do by do x where this do represents partial derivative okay what is this partial derivative we will discuss later so do by do x plus do by do y plus do by do z so this is nothing but d by dx along x axis d by dy along y axis d by dz along z axis but to specifically say that this is along x axis we have to multiply this by a unit vector along x axis that is i the second component by a unit vector along j and the third component by a unit vector along z along sorry k along z axis so this is how we define a del operator a del operator is i into dou by dou x plus j into dou by dou y plus k into dou by dou z so this is the mathematical definition of a del operator it is nothing but the extension of a simple operator d by dx to three dimension and remember it is a it is a three dimensional operator and it is a vector operator why it is vector operator you can clearly see here okay each component is multiplied by a unit vector specifying the direction okay so this is a vector operator and it is a three dimensional one and another important operator that will be quite useful okay rather more useful than del operator is the square of the del operator which is called as del square operator the another important operator is del square operator which is also called as laplacian operator okay so 
this is very important operator in quantum mechanics okay the very important equation called schrodinger wave equation that we will derive later okay it consists of this operator called as del square operator or laplacian operator okay del square is nothing but the square of del operator okay and we have already defined at the beginning what do you mean by square of an operator what do you mean by square of an operator square of an operator means nothing but applying the same operator two times so del square operator is nothing but applying del two times and since del is a vector quantity you can multiply a vector in two ways okay one is called as vector product or cross product the other type is called as scalar product or dot product and remember this del square operator is obtained by scalar product mm, or the dot product of delta operator so del square operator is obtained by scalar product of delta operator so it's nothing but the multiplication of the delta operator two times you are applying the delta operator two times and since delta is not a simple operator it is a vector operator you can multiply them either by using vector product rule or uh, scalar product rule but here the definition of del square is consisting of the scalar product of delta operator therefore delta square is nothing but operator delta dot operator delta this dot represents a dot product or scalar product okay if i write a cross it represents cross product or vector product this is not required here because the definition is true scalar product so this is i into dou by dou x plus j into dou by dou y plus k into dou by dou z into this is delta operator again into delta i into dou by dou x plus j into dou by dou y plus k into dou by dou z so if i multiply this one you get nine terms an equation containing nine terms but if i use the rule of scalar product okay on this unit vectors i j and k most of the terms becomes zero and the things get simplified it becomes dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square okay second differentiation dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square therefore this delta square operator the laplacian operator is nothing but dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square how it is obtained it is obtained by the scalar product of delta or del operator now is it a three dimensional operator or not yes it is a three dimensional operator because it contains three terms each term dealing with one of the axis x axis y axis and z axis what is the corresponding two dimensional operator this is a three dimensional operator what would be the corresponding two dimensional operator if we are discussing two dimension in uh, along x and y axis it would be dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square this third term would vanish and what would be the corresponding operator for one dimension if we are discussing about x axis the corresponding term will be d square by dx square so d square by dx square is the one dimensional form of laplacian operator dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square is the two dimensional laplacian operator whereas this is a three dimensional laplacian operator okay and to comment whether it is a scalar or a vector operator okay you can clearly see that the unit vectors what we had here i j and k has vanished here okay it is simply dou square dou x square dou square by dou y square dou square by dou z square so the unit vectors have have 
vanished which clearly indicates that it is a scalar operator and it is obvious because when you have a vector and you are taking a dot product or a scalar product of two vectors the result is a scalar on the other hand if you take vector product or cross product of two vectors the result is a vector since we have taken the scalar product here the result is a scalar so remember both the operators are three dimensional operators but del operator is a vector operator whereas del square which is also called as laplacian operator is a vector operator okay i will conclude here about operators we have discussed some of the important properties of operators in the next class we will define what is a well behaved function and an important property of a well behaved function called as eigen function and what are eigen values and we'll discuss about an important property of operator called as hermitian property of operator and then we will go to the very important concept that is derivation of schrodinger wave equation